Hi guys, welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm suffering a little bit from my mouth, a really bad sore on my mouth. So it like hurt. It, I mean, the worst has already passed, thank God. But now it's like, it's turning into a scab. It hurts anyway, but I can still do videos, right? And still enjoy perfume. I have actually bought a quite a, a number of fragrances uh, lately, but also um, sold some, or have I sold some? Uh, so have I swapped some? No, I've given, actually, given away a few bottles. I think I've talked to you about that I've been following this new podcast, and there are these two women that I really, I really enjoy their podcast. I think it, they have so many stories, and I love the way they describe fragrances. And they, um, I'm, I was kind of getting to, uh, getting a picture of what they like, and what they wear, and what they're looking for, and uh, they... <clears throat> invited um I, I got a, a chance to go to an event that they were having in the second hand store it was kind of a collaboration with someone that's running this vintage little store and they had they had made like a little kind of an exhibition of fragrances and placed them in different like um archetypes by Jung um like the witch and um the, the research that they kind of made up I think these like sort of sub personalities and and put these different fragrances in there and then um, it was just a really nice evening. We had like tea and sandwiches and um, it, it was really nice. And I just thought I would, you know, show my appreciation for the, for the podcast by giving them some perfume. And I gave one of them uh, my Jersey EDT from Chanel Exclusives because I heard her say, she said, they're too, it's so expensive, I'll never own one. Um, and I know she loves lavender. And I've heard her talk about grass and that has both of those notes. So I, hopefully that will be... Um, a success for her and then I gave her my bottle of vetiver from Nikolai which I it's been I, I kind of wanted it was a nice like beginner's vetiver kind of a little bit powdery a little bit vanillic and kind of an easy wear of a vetiver but I'm still kind of on the fence about vetiver in general and I've heard that she liked it and I thought I just want I'm going to pass it on I did keep two milliliter of each just kind of for reference so I can go back and see what they were like and why I didn't, you know, wear them. And I mean, I can always get a new bottle if I absolutely have to. And I, I don't think I will. I don't, I don't think I will with these two. And then um, the other one got my uh, 24 Fabourg from Hermes, which I never wear because it, it's really beautifully made. It's kind of vintage style. Um, this particular formula that I had is like from 2000. And, 12, something like that. It, I think it was the, it's the, it's the EDP, but it makes me feel a little bit old, you know, and these, these women, these women are young, like they're in their, I think they're in their thirties. Um, and I think that it won't make them feel old the same way. Cause I am a little older. So I think that, and they've, they've talked about kind of like old women's perfume or we have an expression for it in Swedish and they had an, an episode all on that. And I thought that they might, they had never smelled, she'd never smelled it. So I thought, um, that would be a perfect gift for her. And also she took over my, uh, I passed on my Bijou Romantique from Etalie de Durange because even though I like it, I typically, I don't, I don't reach for it that much. And I thought she was kind of a Shalimar girl and it's kind of similar, but a little more modern. So I thought that would work. And then there were some other little tiny stuff in the bags. They made, got each like a goodie bag. So I, I got to declutter four fragrances and hopefully I made them happy as well. Then I have found, I have bought now recently, let's see, uh, three, three new fragrances. And they're all ones that I've sort of been on the hunt for for a while. The first one I'm very happy to present to you. It is Private Collection um, from Estee Lauder. This one, um, don't mix it up with the new one that you see a lot of on, you know, discounters and different web shops called Eau de Private Collection, like the water of a private, like a more, probably a more easy wear. It, it is quite similar. I have smelled it. It's been a while now, but this is, this is the, the, the real private collection. It also comes in a perfume version, which I have had a little sample of, which is basically the same, but very much more concentrated. Um, and this is just, I, I bought it only for nostalgic reasons. And also because I think it is beautiful. It's a very green leaning, um, green leaning fragrance that really dries down nice and vanillic, but it's not like your typical, like eighties, nineties, um, Chypre vintage. It's not that, let's see when it came out. It came out in 1973. It was created by someone named Vincent Mar Marcello, who I've never heard of. Um, and it was, it was actually Estee's own personal perfume 
uh, for many years before they launched it to the market. And it has um, chrysanthemum, lime flowers, and heliotrope. So it's, I guess it's quite powdery. Jasmine and citrus in the top. Orange flower, ylang ylang, coriander. I'm trying to see if I can get these notes. To me, this is just, this for me reminds me of my early, like, in my, my, my teens. This is when I, I think I was still a teenager when I got my first bottle of private collection. And I just, for me, it's all about that era in my life rather than picking out notes. But I would have guessed that this had galbanum maybe. And the notes on like, um, I found a certain amount of notes like in, on Estee Lauder's Swedish homepage. And then I found other notes on Fragrantica that were like more notes. There was Narcissus, there was Honeysuckle. So I don't know if they've kind of, sometimes I find that they're trying to, like many of these sellers, they think maybe it's easier for people to remember the notes if they summarize a little bit. And they used to write, you know, list all the notes because I find this a lot for older fragrances that they, um, the, the, the note listings are really long. And on the, the longer one, there's oak moss as well. Uh, and something called Reseda Mignonette is the same, same flower. I think it's kind of a green, um, green looking flower, like light green. Maybe it does, does actually bloom in white. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, in this, in the, according to this list, it has pear as well. It's, it's super, super green. Um, a little bit aldehydic perhaps. I don't think I saw any aldehydes listed. Let's see. You just have to get your nose on it. Um, I, I don't. I wouldn't have paid full price for this, but I paid like half, um, and I'm really happy about it. Then I have been looking for the EDT version of uh, Infusioned Iris, and it looks like this. It doesn't even say Infusioned Iris on it. I think it says, yeah, it says under, and this is the EDT. I already have the EDP. This is the newer version. Then there's also like an older EDP. And the older EDP, um, the person that I bought this from, she she likes the older EDP better because it has kind of an incense -y base. Um, I would say that the EDT is a little bit more feminine and powdery. It's like really, really floral and really, really pretty. Whereas um, the EDP is more has more vetiver and is a little bit more unisex and masculine and I get more of a laundry vibe from this. This one has benzo in too, I think, let's see. Iris, mandarin, uh, neroli, uh, cedarwood, and benzoin. And the notes on this one are a little bit different, but they're, they're, they're really different. So I'm thinking about actually keeping them both because I do prefer this to the EDP, but I really like this still. Many people of my normal friends that smell this, the EDP version, the one that they sell right now, um, say that it's kind of a, it's kind of a, for them, like a yogi kind of fragrance. Like it, to them, it's kind of like, an, they associate it with meditation and calming, like it gives you them a calming, a fresh but calming feeling. Um, to me, I, I don't know, I, I don't really get that. I, I, I wouldn't describe it like that, but to me, it's an iris fragrance, but since they don't really know they don't know iris, so they have to describe it in you know what the what, what they what it gives to them. Oh, I did want to say one more thing. Okay, so I bought both of these from the same person, and in the bag she had put um, this little kind of like a little bonus, uh, and this is um, from Moschino, and it's called Couture exclamation mark Couture, and it is an incredible fragrance. I love this so much, and it's discontinued since I mean many years came out in 2004. It's an Olivia Cresp creation. And it's an Olivia Cresp is like a, like a master perfumer. I mean, he's made Angel. He's made Aura from Thierry Mugler. He's made, uh, let's see, he has, his Acro is his new house. I'm not so fond of the Acro house, really. He's made Paco Rabanne XS, and Brett de Noir for Aaron. He's made Dirty Rice from Born to Stand Out. So they're all different. The new Devotion from um, Dolce & Gabbana, he's, he's the person behind that. Sean Celicia from Guerlain. I mean, many of these. Flashback also from Olfactive Studio and Black Opium. He was, he was in collaboration with a few other perfumers on Black Opium. But this fragrance is one of those, um, I'm just gonna have to put a little, this is just, this is just a little um, splash bottle. And it's so cute too. Um, 
I'm going to try to find a bottle. I'm going to be on the lookout for this for sure. Cause I loved it. I loved it like right away. I mean, maybe not the first like 10, 20 seconds because I, I found it smells a lot like alcohol, but like after that, it's kind of one of those fragrances that makes a perfect wear anywhere, wear anytime with anybody. Uh, every occasion is right for this fragrance. It's like, it's a little bit aldehydic, but I find that it's not so like old school. Let me see, does it have any iris in there? No, it's mandarin orange, black pepper, and bergamot in the top. And then pomegranate, I wouldn't have been able to say though. No, it's pomegranate blossom. So it's a little floral, peony, yellow poppy and poppy seeds, and jasmine, and then benzoin, vanilla, and cedar in the base. It's just really soft, really beautiful, a little tiny bit fruity. But it's not fruity in a way, like I'm, I'm usually a little bit turned off by fruit. I don't like fruit and fragrance very much. So this is just a tad, tad fruity and it dries down so nicely when, when that when those aldehydes kind of calm down aldehydes aren't listed at least not on fragrantica but you know you never know with it's it's so beautiful so soft so powdery so such a perfect fragrance such a perfect fragrance i love it couture from moschino let's see what else i have been trying lately um Okay, let's see. Oh yes, I did buy another iris fragrance. I can't get enough iris fragrances. <laughs> uh, this one I've had my nose on for a while. I was through a decant like a year ago and I thought I, I will buy a bottle but I'm not gonna pay full price. But this is not so expensive. You can get this at discounters now for like, uh, let's see, like a thousand Swedish crowns, a little bit, a little more than that, um, which is like under a hundred dollars, which is a really, really good deal. And this is from the house, um, that's the really, really old niche house, Aubigon. It's spelled with an H and ends with a T, but those are silent in French, Aubigon. And this is famous kind of for, you know, Pr Princess Diana used to wear one of the fragrances from this house, I think when she got married, uh, Quelques Fleurs Originales. I used to have a, a bottle of Quelques Fleurs Royales. You might want to check that um, video out earlier in my um, video history. I ended up getting rid of it. I, I still, I mean, it's a really nice fragrance. I just kind of like got to know it. I felt like I know it now. Um, and it's kind of like really, really pretty um, and kind of like a powdery. It had white honey. It had, I think, some rose. It, um, like a big bouquet of flowers, but it was kind of wrapped up in like some, like a whipped cream kind of feeling. It was just really, really beautiful fragrance. Something happened to the bottle, so finally I decanted the rest because the sprayer was broken or something like that. Anyway, this one is more like a classic dry iris, but it dries down really nicely. I mean, when I say dry, I mean like earthy, like think um, like oak moss, carrot seed type of earthiness. I think I did put the notes here. Let's see. I, I, I haven't actually worn it since I, since I got it. I've worn it a little bit, like I just put a few sprays on. Um, okay, it has Lily of the Valley, which I typically don't like. Bergamot, pink pepper, pear, and rose. This pear, I can never pick out pear, like nothing smells like pear to me, even though pear is listed. I, I have never smelled like, oh, this is a pear fragrance. Irisy, langy lang, and jasmine, and it's like your typical, like a good, nice base, musk, woody notes, sandalwood, vanilla, and amber. So really nothing special in the notes. And this is kind of a basic iris. I'm just gonna spray a little here just to kind of re refresh my memory. But it is like the perfect, kind of like the perfect basic iris. Like if I would compare it to Infusioned Iris, uh, the EDP version, this is more of a vetiver, clean laundry feel, whereas this is a little bit more of an of a oak moss bottom, I think. I mean, oak moss and carrot seed are not listed, but I'm getting that little bit of a cold, earthy, damp undertone that I don't get with this. This has none of that. This has more of like a vetiver. I get a little bit of a masculine vibe from this. And this iris, maybe I didn't even say the name, Iris de Champs, like the, the champion iris, I guess. Um, it, it's really a nice, but it's not as hardcore as... It reminds me a little bit of Iris Silver Mist from Serge Lutens, but it's not that hardcore. Or like Iris from Zerzhov, which I find impossible to wear because it's just too 
dry and cold and sharp. This doesn't do that, but this goes like halfway there um, in a good way. And then when it dries down, it's like it gives a little bit of a white flower. I guess it's maybe the lily of the valley, but it's really nice. It, I mean, I guess it has that really nice ambery base to land on. So it never goes cold and sharp to my nose, except in maybe in the very, very opening. Okay, and then I've been trying some new exciting fragrances. I think I said maybe my last video or maybe the one before that, that I was really kind of intrigued by this house, Orme, which is a natural house. Um, I've had some discussions about this thing with natural recently. Um, so I met this... Um, should I start off? I'm going to start off with the Orme fragrance. I'll get back to this thing on natural, but I give them credit for working with natural ingredients because I think it makes a difference to the smell. And I think also it makes a difference to like if it's, um, you know, it might be bad for your health to put the chemicals on your skin. Um, but I want to, I'm going to, I want to discuss this, that point with you um, just in a minute because there are some different takes on that. And I've discussed it with this perfumer that I, I know her a little bit. I'm not friends with her, but we know each other. But this fragrance, um, it's a new fragrance from Orme, and it's called 1812. Um, it's a really nice, and I'm, I'm, I know I'm typically off rose, but it, it does list rose. But in the way it's presented here, it's kind of like a gourmand rose um, that smells a little bit like marzipan. Like it smells like, I mean, it's a little bit sugary. It's a little bit, it has cherry. It has, I think it might have some, some almond. Let's see if I have written this down. Yeah, it does. Okay, so it's a rose and lychee. I wouldn't have been able to say because it's, it's pretty sweet. There's nothing tart to me in this. It has some other citruses in the top. And then it has, yeah, cherry, almond, violet, and heliotrope. Sa uh, clary sage, uh, sugar, sandalwood, and vanilla in the base. I mean, it's... The, the funny thing is when I tried this on in store... Um, I, I tried it kind of next to this other fragrance, a new launch, a new, uh, a new launch from Born to Stand Out, Korean brand called Sin and Pleasure. And Sin and Pleasure is, I think it might have a cherry note as well, but it's, what they have in common, these two are that they're both really sweet. But when I tried them side by side, this was nowhere as sweet as um, Sin and Pleasure. Like Sin and Pleasure was really, really sweet when I tried them side by side. However, I did really like that fragrance. Um, I found that though a little bit I could tell that that was synthetic and this is natural. Um, but I want to go back and try Sin and Pleasure as well because that was like a really nice sweet fragrance. And sometimes in the winter time, now we have snow here and the temperature has really dropped, I, I do appreciate sweeter scents. But when I tried them side by side, this was almost a little bit tart next to this really sweet sugary fragrance. So this, even though this has sugar listed, it's not that sweet. It doesn't go into that territory. I would call this a semi-gourmand maybe. I mean, it's a gourmand. No, it's a gourmand. I would say that. But it's not, it's not super cakey. I think it does it come off more floral. It has like more of a natural sweetness. Um, and maybe, you know, those are like the sage in there. Clary, I don't know if that maybe takes off a little bit of the sweetness. It's really, really pretty. I've worn, I've given this a couple wearings. Very, very nice. Uh, then I tried, um, there's a Swedish perfumer, and her name is Ellen Dahlgren. And she has her, her fragrance. She is launching now um, 12 new fragrances. And they're all based on archetypes from Jung, you know, the, the, psycho the famous psychologist. Um, and one of them is called, she's now launching, she's launching them in pairs. And I think she's trying to like work with the opposites. Like we all have kind of have these qualities within us, uh, supposedly. And now she's launching the ruler and the jester. And the ruler um, is a fragrance that I really have been kind of like struggling to categorize. Like, where do I put this? And it's something about it is like super, super familiar. And the funny thing is about these two fragrances, uh, the Jester and the, the Ruler, is that they have a lot of common notes, but they go into completely different directions. Her, her fragrances are on Fragrantica, but like they've just been put up there. Um, like no one has, has evaluated them or anything. <clears throat> but they both have 
uh, I think they like both have grass, they both have patchouli, uh, both have rhubarb, which is really uncommon in fragrances, um, and they both have sweet orange. Let's see. Um, and they, okay, and, and lemon and musk and cedar wood. And because she had like some of, she had this little pop up the other day, like with little mingle. She, um, you know, she invited to, to like a little drink, and we got to try these fragrances, and she told, she talked about them. And she also had some of the raw materials with her and the cedar wood. I, this is something I did not know. Uh, I got the chance to try ISO E Super, kind of like direct, like the raw material that she's used. And that's, this is like her version of cedar wood. Or like, typically you would use ISO E Super for cedar wood. I didn't know that. I thought, because when you look on Fragrantica, you know, what is ISO E Super? Well, it's a synthetic molecule and it has kind of a, a woody, musky, kind of cozy uh, feeling. And boy, it smelled so good right from the bottle. Um, and I got kind of a almost caramelly kind of feeling. It was, it was really a cozy scent and really, really, uh, I could wear it by itself. Anyway, um, so the ruler is the first thing that I thought of when I wore it. Um, I mean, this is, I would call a semi gourmand and it has it has, I mean, it has a, some green notes in the top. It has grass, and then it has kind of these tartar notes, rhubarb and lemon, and it has sweet orange. And then the mid is tonka. I think it has tonka, but both in the mid and the base. It's a lot of tonka. Tonka, cedar wood, or this isoe super, rose, myrrh, and, and cashmere wood, which I find makes it really modern. I typically, I, I hesitate a little bit when I see this cashmere wood. Um, and the base is tonka, patchouli, vanilla, benzoin, and musk. And it is, it's slightly balsamic. Um, and it's powdery. And it's, it, the opening is a little bit green, which made me first think of Ambra Calabria from Nishane, the Turkish house. But that is more sparkly. This is, this is more powdery than sparkly. Um, it made me think a little bit of Rosendo number, Rosendo Mateur number seven, which I have tried a little bit side by side and found that they are not similar at all. Even though there's an overlap of notes, doesn't mean that they're similar because this has a green quality, um, and Rosendo Mateur is heavier because it has the oud, and the oud really stands out when you try them side by side. This is something completely different. This is a a powdery, resinous, kind of ambery gourmand, semi-gourmand, I would say, semi-gourmand, because it has these, this, this grassiness in the top. Um, then it made me think of Arbole from here in green, um, because there's something, and I looked up the notes there, and that has a lot of tonka, vanilla, patchouli, and those notes are in here as well. And a little bit the style, I think, because the next thing that I came to think of was um, this fragrance that has been a favorite for a long time. I haven't worn it like in forever from Zerjoff. It's called Dajala. And this is sometimes described as kind of a green leaning amber, like an herbal amber, because it has like galbanum at the top. But it also has orange, just like the ruler. And it has, um, this has kind of a floral mid, and then it has kind of a resinous ambery base with musk. So it has quite a few overlapping notes, and this I know I've compared to Ambra Calabria before. That has more of a sparkle, this one doesn't, but this one is actually really similar to the opening of the ruler. Um, now, I don't, now I can't remember where I've sprayed, I have to spray this again, I've got to spray this again just to kind of remind myself, but this one I've worn, I've been kind of like really working with it. And then I saw somebody, this I found really interesting. I saw someone on Fragrantica describe this as, it has the same fruity opening as the pineapple opening of Aventus. And I had like never thought of that, but it really does, like it really does. But I am an Aventus fan, I like Aventus. I, I find the whole, in all, it's a little bit too masculine for me, but like this one doesn't have pineapple, but it has that kind of same style like a citrusy, fruity opening, but this is orange and uh, rhubarb um, and grass. So it's green and a little bit fruity. And it has a, I think it has an Aventus vibe. Um, 
this one more so than the ruler. But I, I find it in interesting just to see that there is an overlap with Dajala, and I find it strange that Dajala is not more spoken about. There are only like 253 something votes on Fragrantica, like nobody talks about it. It is a little bit overpriced, I will say. This is like, um, in euros, like how much is it? I mean, this is, it's ex really expensive. For 50 mil, you pay like uh, close to $300 maybe, or like $250, $300. It, it's too much, it's too much, I would say. Um, this one's actually a personal gift for me, and not, not from the store, but from a private person. Um, I, I do cherish these drops a lot. I love it. And I think, but I do, I don't think it is, um, it's not like a twin fragrance to the ruler. The ruler is more about myrrh and resins and tonka. Um, I think it, there's some, there's something kind of a little bit gourmandy, like it's a little bit cakey, like it, I get a kind of a, a vibe of like marzipan. Um, you know, I, something about it made me think of this 1812 from, from Orme. They're, they're not similar. I mean, they're not like similar at all, but there's something in there that also has gives it kind of marzipan feeling because it has almond and it has rose and it has uh, cherry or this one. I don't know what it is. There's this, this is an interesting fragrance. I'm going to be, you know, wearing it more um, and I'll let you know how it goes. Then I also did try Myrrh and Tonka from Jo Malone and just kind of, mostly because I was kind of cleaning this, this little decant up because it had, it had a little label that was coming off and I wrote, I, I wrote a new one because it was bothering me. And then I, I just put some on down here. And then I did notice that it was overlapping a little bit with the ruler as well. So, um, the ruler kind of takes me down like a, a niche road of familiar fragrances, but nothing is completely equal. So it reminds me a little of Arbole, a little of Dajala. And I think the difference is like this one is a little, the ruler, I get a little bit, especially in the opening, a little bit of, um, how to describe this, like of a lush, uh, here I'm green kind of quality, like a little bit more of that homemadeness, like it's a little not quite as sophisticated. It's more modern, I would say, than for example, Dajala, which is like, this is sophisticated. Here I see someone really dressed up would wear this, where I find the ruler um, is a little bit more like Arboulé. It's more a little bit alternative, a little more like a, a modern person would, would wear it. Uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, she makes her stuff in grass, I think, in small batches. Uh, she's really, really worked with the longevity. And I don't think this has an beast longevity or not sillage either. But the jester, on the other hand, um, I mean, it has good, it, I, I would say it's good. It's, 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 it's average, I would say. Average to, it's quite good. It, it, it lasts. Um, whereas the jester, that one, uh, the jester is kind of like a green, fruity, playful fragrance, and it also has grass. It also it has green mandarin, sweet orange, rhubarb, lemon in the top, and then floral notes in the mid with neroli, cassis, musk, and the base is patchouli, cedar, and musk. But it is, it, it has nothing in common with the ruler to me, except that you can actually detect the rhubarb in both in the beginning and the grass. This is more like white floral, but the, with that really like a citrus bomb. Like the first, um, the first thing that hits you is that boy, this is really juicy, and the juiciness actually does stay. And then after a while, I was like, oh, this smells like Electro Limonade from L'Orchestre Parfums, and that one I ended up giving away because of I, because that first blast of juiciness kind of just just went up in smoke like after five minutes five ten minutes maybe i would give it whereas the jester has that feeling but it stays so if you're into that kind of thing you should check it out i don't know if she sells samples i mean she's just launching now uh i don't think she's in any swedish stores yet i mean she sells on her own web page ellen dalgren.se i think and um i think she, some shop out of barcelona sells her perfumes and now if you guys are listening from sweden she has a pop-up shop on Regeringsgatan 61, I think it is, and I think she's open all through 
November and maybe a few days into December and you can try these two new fragrances. Um, but um, the, I just felt like the Jester was just not my thing. You know, I'm just not, I don't, I, I don't wear, I, I think it's kind, they're kind of fun, you know, like citruses and fruitiness and um, because it's not like, for, I find citrus is its own category, not so fruity. And rhubarb is not either, like, when I, when I say I don't like fruity fragrances, I mostly mean, like, apricots and peaches and pears and apples and stuff like that. And banana, I really hate banana. Pineapple is okay in Aventus, but I don't gravitate towards it. And I don't like dried fruits either. Like, I, I don't like dates in fragrance very much. Um, I know that certain... It works sometimes, but that doesn't mean that I, like, I wouldn't like a date prominent fragrance. Um, speaking of dates, I got to borrow a fragrance from a friend. This is another way, a good way of enjoying fragrance, because she knows that I've been kind of exploring vetiver, and she wanted me to try this. And this is from L'Artisan Parfumeur, and it's called Coeur de Vetiver Sacre. Sacré. That's what it's called. And now I should have, of course, known what this means, but maybe something like sacred vetiver or something. Um, this I've worn a few times, and I will not be buying a bottle of this, and I do think it's discontinued as well, but I love these bottles so much, and I like almost want to buy it just because the bottle is so darn gorgeous. I'm going to show it to you. Look at that. And I, I only have one of these in my collection, and it's the Amber. It's L'Eau d'Ampe Extreme. And this they still sell, but in a different bottle. This one I've heard is discontinued, but I mean, you can find it around if you look. I don't mean at discounters, I mean like from other people. But this one has so many notes, and it's not just vetiver, but it has like very, very prominent tea note. It's kind of bitter, and it has dates, which I think is good in this fragrance because I think it would, the tea would be too bitter if it didn't have the dates. It also has incense, apricot, pepper, saffron. There's so many, I mean, there's all kinds of woody notes. It has rose, it has iris, like so many notes. I think the sillage is quite bad for this fragrance. It's very low, but the fragrance is really pretty, but very low key, and I think it leans too masculine for me. Um, but it's, it, there's so much more going on in here than the vetiver. Osmanthus is in here, which is not a favorite note of mine. Um, but it's nice, though. It's vetivery. It's slightly creamy in the dry down. And it does have a lot going on. Like, it's a, it's a complex fragrance. It was created by Karen Vishon Spinner, which I hear Ramsey talking about a lot. I think it's like a favorite perfumer of his. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen much by her. So maybe she makes more masculine oriented fragrances. I don't know, but now I'm curious to find out. I will be returning this. This has tarragon too. I think that the masculine notes in here, um, besides the vetiver, are um, tea, I find very unisex. But tarragon, maybe the guaiac wood, wood. It has castorium. I don't find it very animalic at all. Cedar wood. I mean, the woody notes for sure. But And then it has like vanilla and tonka, but I don't get much of that. I mean, it's pretty, but I'm done with it. Unfortunately, um, I would love to get a pretty bottle like this, but I'm not going to get a, a fragrance just because now the sun is coming in here. Um, just because it has a pretty bottle. But I really much appreciate being able to try fragrances and I have the, the vetiver fragrance that I've kept but never wear and I'm going to make a, um, a point of wearing it now is Escal on Haiti um, which is a really beautiful citrusy um, god do I have anywhere left to spray I'm just going to put it on my fingers just to kind of remind myself I like this so much better it doesn't have any bitter notes or to me it's more like it's more like the other aspects of vetiver with citrus. It's really bright, really beautiful. I don't have to struggle at all. It's a very nice morning fragrance. Uh, looking back, though, I don't think I would have, I should have bought this because, I mean, a decant would have been enough. I could gotten, I could have gotten a ten milliliter, um, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't wear it enough to have a, have a full bottle, but I, but I will wear it. I really like it. Uh, maybe I'll just give myself a few. Just freshening up squirts of it because it's really nice. Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> well, that was all for today. I'll get back to you about if I keep wearing um, the 1812 from Orme. Did I even tell you the name of the Orme fragrance? I don't know. This just came out. Uh, something that bugs me about this house, though, is that they don't give you the perfumer's name. This is a small family 
uh, run business and I think both the, the mother and the son are perfumers um, I could be wrong and they they make things in small batches and use all natural ingredients I do like that 1812 refers to, to a date the 18th of December so I guess it's supposed to be a, a, like a, Chris, a, a fragrance that fits for Christmas it's I think it's really sweet though really heliotropy sugary sweet but not too sugary it's um maybe the lychee kind of balances that out you know makes it a little bit more like an interesting sweet and tart together kind of fragrance um i'm, I'm also going to admit that these two were given to me they're kind of like beyond um sample that i would accept because this is like a decant but it's bigger than a sample so i was like a little hesitant to uh, to to accept it but I just couldn't get myself to buy a bottle and I really wanted to try the ruler because I really really liked and I asked if she had a sample and she didn't and she gave me this but I mean I don't know her she's not a friend she's an acquaintance um, I love that she's Swedish and that she works in small batches and that she's starting out and that she's an entrepreneur and uh, she's a really nice person um, but like I, I um, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit bad, like I've gone gone beyond what I normally do, like ex accepting gifts, because I do definitely, this is a 7.5, and I don't know, this looks a little bit bigger, I think this might be a 10. Um, but this is from a shop, this is not from the brand, this is not from the brand, and th this shop sells lots of brands, and many of these brands I do say bad things about as well, I just want to put it all out there and be transparent about it. Um, and I really, I just couldn't resist. Uh, and I have actually been, I can maybe, I, I've been to events there and said no to, to a sample set. Uh, but now I've decided that I will accept samples. So we could say that this one was an, instead of that sample set that I turned down because I do need material for my, for my channel as well. And I love to get my hands on stuff. But this one I might actually might return to Ellen uh, and she could give it to somebody else and maybe I will buy a bottle. Or, uh, I'll give it back when I've, you know, made myself, um, I, I made a decision as to whether I, you know, want to keep it or not. And I might not keep it. Then she could give it to somebody else. But it's, it's, yeah, it really reminds me of so many other fragrances without being uh, a copy of any of them. It doesn't have a twin fragrance. Very, very interesting. Um, anyway, that was all for today, guys.